you so much for watching this video. I wanted to do this interview with my very good friend of over a decade, mm -hmm. Doug Brown. And he's a wonderful filmmaker, um, video editor. I mean, he's got an amazing background of many years doing uh, film, so many years filmmaking, video making, mu doing music videos. He was a host well, on um, Shaw TV here in Canada for a very long time. And I feel very privileged to have been able to work with Doug for over 10 years now. Um, so I wanted to bring you guys in and show you some of the behind the scenes and talk to him about some of the work we've done over the past decade and all the music videos we've uh, been able to collaborate on and uh, all the things that we have coming up for you. Okay, so I just want to start off. To, to set this up, Doug set up all these, we have three cameras going. We have three lights and lots of gear and which took us like what, an hour and a half? Yeah, it took a little while to set this well, up. I shouldn't even say us, <laughs> it was mostly you. We had to bring things out of the cage and hook them up and set them up. So, so it's, uh, it's kind of fun. We get to play with some of this uh, equipment that they've got here in the studio. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, so we're at the Center for Arts and Technology in the Okanagan and here in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. Normally it's Doug interviewing people because he worked for Shaw for how long? Uh, 19 years. Wow. And before that, what did you do? I have my own video production company called Lightspeed Multimedia. Oh, okay. And I made um, training videos and TV commercials and corporate videos. And so I met you through, I think, Shaw TV, right? Or is, is that where we, we first so. met? I think so. You probably came on a show. Yeah, I think so. And, and we were just talking about your music, which has uh, has always struck me. Your voice is so compelling. And oh, so, I, so I was like, yeah, we should do something. You know? <laughs> Well, I, I think that was 10 years ago. It's probably close to 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah so I think it was either 2008, 2009, somewhere in there. So yeah. now we're in 2019. And uh, who knows if you're watching this 2019, but we're making this in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so we've worked here really for 10 years. And I just finally felt like it was time to um, show everybody all the work that you do behind the scenes because pe people get to see all those sort of glammy things that the finished product the finished product so we yeah. get to see everything edited take out all the you know the oopsie shots and um, not that you ever <laughs> mess up oh yeah of ever course. never <laughs> I'm perfect perfect every one take that's it we're done we can move on now <laughs> No, sometimes we, we spend like many hours doing many takes, doing yeah. lots of different angles. Yeah. Um, so I think, I'm trying to think of the first projects we did together. Well, I, I mean, we did some interviews at Shaw TV. So yep. I've done, um, I think I, we were talking about maybe my first album yep. when, when we first met. Yep. And then I think we- you just finished your tour. Okay, yeah, I had a tour across Canada and, yep. and the US. Yep. And uh, to promote my first album, Beyond Words, back in 2009. Yep. And then I think we also did an interview where we talked about, I had that weird scandal that happened in Eurovision and, and uh, yeah. when someone like stole my song. Yeah, 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 it was weird, <laughs> weird things. So, um, and, then, and, and then just over the years, I think I've come back to Shaw a few times talking about yeah. a few different projects. Yeah. And then you really graciously invited me to co-host a Christmas. Yes, we did that great Christmas special together. Hey, hey everybody, it's Doug Brown, our co-host for our show. Sorry I'm a little bit late. I was hoping I could get here in time to help you decorate. Oh, you know, Probably the highlight of my singing career, you actually let me record a couple of songs with you. And I actually, <laughs> I actually sang, which is, you know, I'm the behind the scenes camera guy or, you know, like the news reporter. I'm definitely never singing in public. That's he has a beautiful voice. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh, or the fields we go, laughing all the way. It was awesome to sing with you and do some duets with you. It was fun. It was fun. It was great. I was like sweating like crazy and smiling, <laughs> and it's like, how does she do this all the time and make it look so effortless? I mean, that's something that I've always admired so much about you is that when you're singing, the real you shines through so well, and it's like it's just like a joy to be photographing you or filming you because you perform so well. Like every take is like something magical happens when you start to sing. Oh, thank you. Well, this interview is supposed to be about you, not me. But you're totally flattering me. Thank you. I think that the person behind the camera and the person that you're working with brings that out, and I think that the reason that I've really enjoyed working with you over the years is because um, I've worked with a lot of talented people and there's a lot of amazing people out there definitely a lot of amazing people here in British Columbia like where we live um, but I, I keep wanting to work with you again just because we have this really nice energy 
that um, I feel like you're always up for an adventure. And yeah, well, we've had some adventures. <laughs> I mean, as an independent artist, I have, you know, smaller budgets to work with. Yeah. So I, I don't have the luxury of having, you know, big crews. I don't have the luxury of having, you know, big costumes and all this other stuff. I've tried to put things together, you know, sometimes buying dresses secondhand, try to get props at the dollar store, <laughs> just trying to make things work. All those hearts you hung from the trees. Yes, yes. You're very open to, to trying to make magic out of, you know, our sort of a minimalistic approach to things yeah and um, I find that really fascinating because I mean when you when you do have these huge budgets which I would love to have also <laughs> one day um, perhaps I feel like you have to be more creative it's like more demanding to be more creative and to think outside the box and to do different editing techniques different angles use different lenses to try to brainstorm different ways to make it still look just as interesting when you don't have a big budget I think that our ability to work together, we've developed techniques mm -hmm. and a shorthand that lets you explain it to me. I had a dream mm -hmm. about hearts in trees, right. and it's like, okay, well, how do we conjure that up? How do we make that a reality? So those ch kind of challenges are exciting. Again, like if you had an infinite budget, you just like pay somebody to make that happen. Right. But when you don't, and you have to create that and go, well, how, you know, what kind of camera angles, what kind of lighting, what kind of day, how are we going to make this? you know, the best that it can be with the parameters that we have. And yeah, that's, that's always excited me. I've been an independent filmmaker for a long time, and I tend to make my own sort of small short films, mostly, you know, with minimal crew, trying to just, you know, always push myself to be as creative as I can with the bare bones. Right. Um, because I don't have big budgets to make, to make my movies. I know, so. I actually uh, worked behind yes. there. I worked uh, doing sound for... You're the boom <laughs> operator. <laughs> editing that and I could hear Leah you know asking me questions because it's like the first time she'd ever done that before it's like yeah that's you're doing great Leah it sounds fantastic okay good just wanted to make sure uh, uh, you know there's no like microphone in the shot you've also built several things to make some of the you know images work I mean would you want to talk about that a little bit like, like the, the, so, the jib so, the crane yeah. to, to provide smooth camera movement um, you, you need to put the camera on something. I have a larger camera. It's nice to have a, a crane, which is, or a jib, which is like a, a teeter-totter, mm -hmm. essentially. So you put counterweights at one end, the camera in the other, and it's perfectly balanced so that the camera just floats. And my friend Corey and I, he had a, a machine shop. We engineered our own jib, and it's fantastic. It's so beautiful and smooth, and we can get these great, uh, great camera moves that, you know, I mean, the things cost thousands of dollars, but we built our own. And, and I can't remember which videos did we use the, that speechless? Speechless, yeah. Simple love. Simple love, yes. Yes. Yeah, so we use it on those for sure. Um, on uh, the most recent one, we were using gyro stabilized mm -hmm. cameras, which is a, like a new kind of technique for that sort of thing. So we just shot uh, <clears throat> Someone to Watch Over Me in, I think it was the end of September. And yeah, like just in the fall there. I think it was like the last warm day. Yeah. <laughs> the leaves were just hanging on. And um, it's funny because I think when we shot um, Simple Love back in 2011, it debuted in, I think, February for Valentine's Day in 2012. I think we also got the last warm day. We've traveled to New Mexico. New Mexico, yeah, Santa Fe. That was an exciting trip. And it's just uh, uh, amazing. You had that beautiful song about Georgia O'Keeffe, and we got to go into the museum that celebrates her work and drove out to the ranch that she that she stayed at and took a tour there where they showed us like the tree from the painting and the bluffs that she painted so often and you know that was super inspiring we got to go out in that amazing desert and explore that landscape the, around the ranch that she painted on it, that lookout oh yeah that was amazing it was standing on this bluff that juts out into the canyon falling down to the river way below and off in the distance the mesas just sort of one and then another and another into the distance and you sitting there on that promontory of rock with just all that vastness around you. Yeah, I think I, I, I think I took a couple of pictures of you too just because it was just like an amazing experience and I just yes. want to make sure that like we captured, I, I wish we had like that third person that can always get the behind the scenes yeah, yeah. and that's why I really wanted to do this interview is because 
I feel like there's so much that happens, you know, like all the planning and all the work that you do and all the shots and all the traveling that we've done. And remember those ladders that we yeah, climbed? Yeah, we had to go up all those wooden ladders yeah. to get up to the, the lookout. Okay, so uh, we climbed up, up to that ceremonial cave area. Yeah, it was, that, it was amazing. I, the name of the park that we were It was Bandelier. In. Yeah, Bandelier Park. National Park. Uh, National Park. Just to be in this place where, where people have lived for thousands of years, building their dwellings in there and, and being able to go into it and uh, explore it and experience it and then climb up to that that location and then we're up there filming this and singing and and, and a, a family of tourists come, comes up the ladder oh, okay, we're here <laughs> so, yeah sure so they sat down and they had a little private concert while you sang and they were like <laughs> applauding and went home and bought your cd and that was good we've given quite a few little private concerts i remember when we were uh, shooting the christmas show in penticton and a bunch of people were walking by because we, we always just we have to just shoot in like a lot yeah. of times public locations and things like that but we always have a lot of fun yeah and i'm i'm wearing like this little mini skirt i'm like trying to climb up like 300 feet of it was a lot of ladders of ladders with you know backpack full of camera, camera gear, gear. Yeah. And like makeup and outfit changes and all this kind of stuff and, and then you've got backpacks on and we've and I've got like my hiking shoes with like you know my outfit that I'm wearing and we had so much footage from Santa Fe we didn't know what to do with it yeah, so we yeah. actually wind up making like a few different we got like all panels going yeah we have different panels video. going at the same time just because there was so much material we wanted to like uh, get some of it to show you guys a sweet dairy She met off with stinglets, they made love so pretty, but she longed for these stock in infinite spaces. And then we went to Los Angeles and you got to meet my producer Marty. Marty, amazing guy. Like it was so cool. Like we drive out to um, Santa Monica. Santa Monica. And we go in this place and it's, you know, it's a music studio and it's you know, you, you walk in, and one of the first things you see is this wall of gold and silver and platinum records that he's worked on. And then you look at the names on some of them, and they're like some of the biggest names in, in the business. And he's just like the nicest guy, yeah. really down to earth, great to work with. And he told us that the studio was Brian Wilson's or the Beach Boys practice studio. Yeah. That's where they used to rehearse. The actual Beach Boys were in the same place where that music was dreamed up and created. It was like just a, a thrill of a lifetime to be there. I know I've had so many amazing moments in that studio so it's nice for you to get there too and for you to meet Marty and like yeah. these I tend to be very loyal with um, well pretty much everyone in my life. Um, I, I mean I've used Marty so many times for all the songs and I, I love working with you so I feel like once I find those people that are like really work well in my life and I feel like we we have a lot of dynamics and you know, I can be a little bit um, like, oh, let's just do this random idea. <laughs> or, or I had a dream and I, I want to try to see what we can come up with. Yeah. So I feel like um, like you kind of find like your tribe yeah. of people in life. I mean, not everybody does, but I feel like I do. And I feel like that's very important. Then you kind of have like get on the same wavelength. And you're like, okay, how can we make this work? And, and I feel like you're always up for that. I mean, when we went down to Santa Fe, I mean, again, even though you know, we, we flew to a totally different location, kind of because we had to, because it was about George O'Keefe and we really wanted to yeah. get into the vibe. And we, we found that really neat location just off the highway with yeah. all those colors and the, yeah, the, the mountains. Red Rock Canyon yeah, there and the big amazing. boulders. And, uh, um, but we still always try to make things work and I think we really worked well together as a team and I, yeah. I, I try to do a little bit of photography while we're going on. But um, on the last shoot that we did, it was nice to have um, Ono there. Yeah, it was great. Because um, he was able to capture some of your, what you have to go through. <laughs> Waiting in the creek. Yeah, and... wait, like, I mean, he's like knee deep up in this freezing cold water, um, trying to capture some really cool reflective images. Yeah, he had that great sparkly dress and the water was sparkling and the light was just coming through the trees. And yeah. it, was, it was a magical moment. And so I was like, yeah, of course you, you jump in the creek to get that kind of thing. I mean, it's like, yeah. And then you're like helping me around. I'm like walking barefoot and because like I originally brought heels, which were not good yeah, going no, to work. Not in a creek bottom. No, not a creek bottom. So, um, but yeah, we had a lot of fun with that shoot. And it was nice having that, that third person there. And also, yeah. of course, he took some amazing yeah, photographs great, great as well as some really cool behind the scenes. So it was, it, it was like gave me that idea said you know we really should highlight all the stuff that we've done together yeah huh? uh, um and then we did um kind of like some of those acoustic 
yeah. videos that we did up in the hills. Just sitting there with a the beautiful... The, the South Okanagan. Beautiful setting sun, the late afternoon sun at the with the hillside stretching away and all those beautiful colors and you're just playing and singing live and it was, you know, that was fantastic. Some fields of sunflower from one end of the country to the other. Yes, oh yeah, we went out to um, Quebec for um, Les Tournesol, which means the sunflowers in French. I mean, and that you found that enormous field yes. of sunflowers and they were like higher than our heads yes. and there little pathways through there and just beautiful. Bruno was there as, as singing the duet and it was just it was so fantastic. Yeah, that was a special time. So we yeah, we flew out for that one. The owners of the farm were so gracious to let us shoot there for several days. Yeah. And um, yeah, it just it just seems like everything we do for some reason it's just like the, like a little bit of like universal magic comes in to make everything kind of really work. And I feel like when you find those people that the doors always seem to open, the windows always seem to open, and yeah. the, the universe always seems to like grant you those magical things that you never expected to happen. Yeah. I feel like you've you've found your your people. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I think I feel the same, the same way. Like it's just so comfortable to work with you always a, a fun challenge and, and you're just so up and bright and and and, uh, and, and <laughs> happy you know, you know not, not 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 like forced happiness but you always approach things positively if something goes wrong it's like well how do we figure out a way you never had a diva moment no you know? never had a diva moment <laughs> i'm sure i've had a couple no but i feel like when things go wrong or things are not going a certain way and i think you're the same way i feel like the universe is saying okay there's another way to do something yeah. or something like you're supposed to take a different path with this. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm not only excited about all the work that we have done, but I'm also excited about all the things that we have coming up. We have so many videos oh. planned for you. We have some really neat ideas. Yeah, lots, lots of great ideas. Hopefully we can you know, use this fantastic space mm -hmm. for, for some of that. And yeah, I just, I mean, you keep writing amazing music, so we just have to like, as a tribute to that, to, to share that with the world, we need to make the best possible images to go with it. Yeah, you're well. You're just you're so talented, and the thing too is that um, not only are you talented behind the camera, but <clears throat> when it comes to editing, I mean, you just go above and beyond. I mean, you'll send me like ten drafts yeah. of something to say. Well, I'm tweaking here and tweaking there, and. Um, you know, editing is a huge, huge piece to anything, any movies you make, TV shows, because sometimes it's what you omit is just as important as what you put in. Um, and you always seem to capture, um, there's, there's, there's a magic also to the timing hmm. and where you transition right. frames, especially when music videos, because music videos, they already have a rhythm. Yeah. And to be able to kind of go into the flow with the images and know exactly where to slice it. I mean, sometimes a second makes a huge difference. Well, I'm, I'm looking at frames, like slightest movement of the head that leads into the next cut. It's like cutting on that movement, cutting on the sound, the, the beat, the music. I don't know what to say from a spot. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us today for this interview. Um, it's been something I've been wanting to do for a really long time. And I'm glad that we finally were able to hear your voice because a lot of times we just see me singing and it's you know glamorous and beautiful, but we don't really see all the work that goes into all of this material that I've put on YouTube, Facebook, and out there into the world for um, my fans to enjoy. Um, so I really appreciate that. I really appreciate our working relationship so and and all the collaborations we've done and all the hard work you've put in behind the scenes. And I really wanted you guys to see that and get to know Doug, he's an amazing person. Um, and if you're somewhere out there wants a music video, hire Doug, he's, <laughs> he's amazing. Um, you anyway. have to be as nice to me as she is. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, you guys supporting me and my music and also getting a little window into some of the behind the scenes. And uh, we have so many projects, amazing stuff coming up. We're already brainstorming a bunch of things. And I think... Stay tuned. Yes. Lots to come. Stay tuned. Anyway, have a great day, and we love you guys. Mwah.
Thank you, Doug, for being here. Thank you.